Loyola against them. Now, you can't do that and win ball games. Overall, on the year, they've been out-rebounded six rebounds a game. That's really been the heart of their problem. Their record would be dramatically improved if they could rebound better. Well, Tulsa is led by the all-conference guard, Tracy Moore, who's averaging about 20 points a game in conference play. But quite frankly, they need more, so to speak. Exactly. They miss Moss. They miss Boudreaux. They miss the Rileys. These are guys who really carried a lot of rebounding and offensive load last year for Tulsa. What they have in Tracy Moore is an extremely good perimeter shooter. Doesn't take the ball to the paint a whole lot, but he can get to the foul line. What they really need is two more scores, two more guys to get into double figures. If they do that, they're going to win some ball games. Unfortunately for Tulsa, they have not shot the ball very well. 42% for the year. They need more. You're exactly right to win tonight. All right. And coming into this uh, season, the Tulsa Golden Hurricane had won had only lost eight games overall in the decade of the 80s here at the convention center. Already this season, they have lost five games here at home. We'll be back with a starting lineup coming up after these messages. Sports Vision's coverage of the Missouri Valley Conference is brought to you in part by Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. State Farm Insurance, for all your insurance needs, auto, home, life, and health, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by the Chicago Sun-Times, we've got Chicago covered. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we welcome you to the Tulsa Convention Center for tonight's Missouri Valley Conference basketball game between the Redbirds of Illinois State and your University of Tulsa Golden Hurricane. And now let's meet the starters for tonight's ball game. First for Illinois State, a 6'6 senior from Pekin, Illinois, number 34, Matt Taphorn. For Tulsa, a 6'5 junior from Fleetwood, PA, number 24, Jeff Sadowski. For the Redbirds, a 6'6 senior from Oak Park, Minnesota, number 45, Tony Hollifield. For Tulsa, a 6'5 sophomore from Chicago, number 33, Wade Jenkins. For the Redbirds, a 6'7 sophomore from North Chicago, number 52, Gerard Coleman. And for the Hurricane, a 6'8 junior from Atlanta, Georgia, number 50, Ray Wingard. For the Redbirds, a 6'3 sophomore from Peoria, Illinois, number 25, Randy Blair. And for the Hurricane, a 6'3 sophomore from Indianapolis, number 34, Brian Lloyd. And finally for Illinois State, a 6'4 sophomore from Mount Morris, Michigan, number 43, Ricky Jackson. For Tulsa, a 6'4 senior from Oklahoma City, number 35, Gracie Moore. And at the pitches. The coaches for tonight's ball game for Illinois State, Bob Donawal. For Tulsa, J.D. Barnett. We'll be back with the contest coming up after this. year long rebounding particularly on the offensive end in the first match at uh, normal we saw the pressure from Tulsa really bother Illinois State the second half look for that to possibly be a factor how Illinois State handles that full court or half court pressure now for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane well Tulsa has to have somebody to score besides Tracy Moore he's averaging 20 plus points a game and the next score goes down to eight points a game confidence factor when you're shooting 42% on the year and you've really struggled with your outside shot. One half you shoot 50%, the next half you may shoot 30. Confidence can be a factor. They get to believing they're going to miss instead of going to make one. There's the Golden Hurricane bench. J.D. Barnett has a seat on the bench. There are the officials for tonight's game. Spindler on the left, Dan Crispin in the middle, Burl Sell on the right side. Tony Hollifield on the uh, tap at center court. There's the all-time series between these two teams, tied at eight apiece. The 
the matchups in the starting lineup. Ray Jenkins on the tap for Tulsa against Hollowfield for Illinois State. The Redbirds in the solid red uniforms. Both players over jump the ball and they'll try it again. A good matchup tonight might be Ricky Jackson on Tracy Moore. Jackson has the size and the quickness to stay with Tracy. If he can shut down Tracy Moore of Tulsa, it might be a real good shot for Illinois State to pick up an easy win here. Now we're just about set, I guess, to restart. Here's the opening tip, and it's controlled by Tulsa this time. Tracy Moore sets it up, number 35 in white. I think it's the first time we've seen Tracy Moore at the point. Usually plays the off or second guard. Illinois State's had some changes in their lineup due to illness and injury. A strain of food poisoning has afflicted the Redbirds on their trip down here to Tulsa. A couple, well, almost six players, Bob Donwald was saying, have been ill in the last 24 hours. Lloyd is fouled on the drive. Ricky Jackson, the first foul of the ball game. You plug that uh, food type poisoning in, into the ankle problem that Peterson's had, and you have some real problems. Ricky Jackson reaching in. Blair almost got a piece of him also. Randy Blair, number 25 in red. Looks like their legs got wrapped up in there and caused him to go to the, the court. This is Tracy Moore out at the point. Here's he's going to handle the ball a lot tonight. Jenkins at the baseline. First two points of the game. What's happening now with Tulsa is they've had to move their leading scorer and senior to the point to run the offense. That's a lot to ask of a kid to average 20 points a game and also get the offense started and make sure everything's run properly. It'll be an interesting development in this ball game to see how Tracy Moore handles that point position. Matt Taphorn who played so well in the first half of the first meeting between these two teams. Taphorn number 34. Hollifield gets the step on Wingard. Blew the puppy inside. Hollifield able to chase down. Redbirds have a fresh shot clock. They trail 2-0 early going. We're first half in Tulsa. Gerard Coleman. Jackson from the outside. Wingard bats the rebound over to Jeff Sadowski. Here comes Tracy Moore. Looks like Tulsa will take their time and play this game on the half court. He's talking with assistant coach Phil Saunders. He indicated to us, Wayne, that this ball game will be played on the half court at the tempo Tulsa won. Tulsa controlling right now offensively. Wade Jenkins, sophomore, Proposition 48 casualty last year. Really a freshman type this year. That's Sadowski out front. He was suspended from the uh, first game. J.D. Barnett sat him down, didn't play him at all. You have to be careful, that shot clock is ticking. Five second violation against the Golden Hurricane. Tracy Moore again, even for a veteran, there's J.D. Barnett. J.D. instructing his team, and even for a veteran, and Royster reports on now for Tulsa. A guy like a senior, like Tracy Moore, who's played the off guard position his entire career, there are some nuances about the point guard spot that uh, you may not be aware of. Well, certainly there is, and he just ran into one of them, the five second count. It's different with the ball than without. That foul on Jeff Sadowski, his first, the first on Tulsa here. He got a slow start to this initial half of play. Tulsa leading 2 nothing, almost two minutes in, first half. This is the type of tempo that favors Tulsa, though, if indeed they plan to play it on the half court. Ricky Jackson sets it up for Illinois State. There's Taphorn. Off the hands of Hollowfield. Tony able to chase down. Illinois State being very patient themselves. They're known to play that passing game and turn it over and over. And that's exactly what they did. Lloyd on the turnover. Here's Sadowski. There's Brian Lloyd at the point at the moment. Illinois State will play a tough, aggressive man-to-man -to -man defense pretty much all the way. Wingard inside, blocked on the play. Excellent help side defense that time. The rotation for the Illinois State Redbirds was excellent, just like Coach Donawald would put it on the chalkboard. Illinois State looking for the first two points of the game. Their first two points. Gerard Coleman inside. Double team. Throws it away. That is about the third. Illinois State turnover here in the early going. Sadowski on the cut. Wingard had the rebound for a moment. Sadowski gets it back. There is a 
picture frame missed shot of both this whole year. Missing the easy shots has really been their bugaboo so far this year. Royster on the feed to the baseline. Wingard is tied up by Blair, and the foul is called on Randy Blair of Illinois State. His first, the second, on the Redbirds. Cutting beautiful defense. Cut him off at the baseline just as you would teach him. And the rotation caused the foul, but the defense was fundamentally sound that time. Moore didn't get it in in time. Tulsa turnover, and the Redbirds get it back. It's been a game of mistakes here in the first three minutes. Sometimes when you get lulled into a tempo in a ball game that you don't want, you have a tendency to fall asleep at the switch, Wayne. Sometimes it can affect both teams. Matt Tamporn on the wing. Randy Blair out front. This is a crucial three-game stretch in the Valley for Illinois State. Pass denied by Royster. Knocked out of bounds nicely by Don Royster of Tulsa. It'll belong to Illinois State. But they play here tonight at Wichita on Saturday and then later on close the Valley portion of the road trip at Creighton. They've got a game at home against Ryder after the Wichita State Road contest, but that's a non-conference battle. Royster did an excellent job that time of wrapping around the low post position, creating that turnover. Hollowfield, that's the first two points of the game for the Redbirds. They come with 16-17 left to go. First half, so it took almost four minutes for Illinois State to score here. Again, that tempo in favor of Tulsa. Watch Illinois State here. They really get after you defensively. They try to force you out of your offense, push you about a step, maybe a step and a half where you really want to be. Royster, and we've got a foul away from the ball in the lane. I believe it's Gerard Coleman pushing off. That man, J.D. Barnett, has had a very tough year this year. Lost three experienced veterans. Wayne is coming back with a relatively young team with the exception of Tracy Moore and is really struggling, trying to fight that battle, getting better every ball game. Tony Hollowfield is the guilty party on the push inside in the crowd. His first personal, that is the third team foul on Illinois State. We're tied at two in the early going. A very slow start here at Tulsa. We'll be back. problem as far as Illinois State is concerned. Obviously, the injury, the ankle injury to Cliff Peterson takes a dynamite athlete out of the lineup, but also they've been afflicted, as I mentioned, about six guys came down with some food poisoning last night, and, and they, uh, at the moment, they're playing in slow motion. Well, when you get an illness like that while traveling, you just don't feel like doing a whole lot, Wayne. You just kind of want to lay around. It just takes a lot of energy out of you, and that's kind of the way they're playing. It's kind of lethargic. Tradition of winning at Illinois State that Bob Donwald has maintained Tulsa back on the floor now, along with the Redbirds. It'll be Tulsa basketball underneath the Golden Hurricane basket. Tracy Moore looking on the inbound. Let's watch for Illinois State to pick the tempo up. Probably not in their best interest to stay on the half court with Tulsa. They need to pick that tempo up if they're physically able to do it. Golden Hurricane weaving out front, trying to go down low to Royster. Kicks it back out, Wingard to the outside. Didn't realize he could shoot that far out. Hey, listen, a little out of the big guy's range, but I'm sure that makes Coach J.D. Barnett real happy when you're shooting 42% for the year. Redbirds go to work. They trail by two, and he's got a foul inside. Pushing off foul if it's on Hollowfield. That's his second, and I believe it is. Tony Hollowfield picks up his second personal foul. That's four team fouls now in Illinois State. Both teams playing aggressive defense, playing with their feet, really moving. Tracy Moore at the point for Tulsa. Brian Lloyd getting a start here tonight. There's Sadowski. The real question is, who's going to pick up the slack and join Tracy Moore in double figures for Tulsa tonight? They need one or at least two to win this ballgame. Brian Lloyd just a step inside the three-point rainbow. Last two guys who scored have not been Tracy Moore. That's a good sign if you're a Tulsa fan. He'll get his. The question is whether someone else can score. Randy Blair off the front of the iron. Hollowfield tied up on the play. The alternating possession at points in the direction, the arrow points in the direction of Illinois State. So the Redbirds retain possession. Looks like a case where neither player could get a hold of this rebound. They're both fighting for it. Nobody can get control. Everybody loses their balance. <laughs> Hollowfield was sandwiched there in Wingard on one side, Sadowski on the other side. 
It looks like a slow dance at some nightclub late at night here at the end, doesn't it? <laughs> Redbirds resume offensively. They trail by four. Gerard Coleman struggling and finally double dribbles. Royster applying good defensive pressure. Would not let Coleman get the ball down to the block. Kicked him out to the wing and Coleman bobbled the ball. Coleman had a tough game Monday night in Chicago. Two of nine for the field, just four points at Loyola. Coming into the ball game for the Redbirds, John Pemberton, who had a strong game, seven rebounds at Illinois. Number 53, Pemberton is in. Elsewhere in the Valley, Indiana State leading Drake 42-36 at the half. That game being played in Terre Haute. Indiana State off to a good start. Ron Green through, needs a win. Obviously, Drake on a roll. That could be a big upset. Sadowski hit the deck and the pass off the mark. Or I should say Brian Lloyd went down and he gets up limping. The situation there where neither player is on the right page. Same book, the wrong page. Lloyd comes up limping a bit here. A couple of substitutions. Fallon Wakazi on the front line in place of Royster in Jamal West. A wide receiver on the Tulsa football team. He's got a football scholarship inserted in the backcourt position in place of Lloyd. Pemberton down low, double teamed, and he trapped. Sadowski came over along with Wakazi, and Pemberton shuffled the pivot foot. You saw it all right there, Wayne. Good call. The defensive rotation, the pressure down on the low post caused that turnover. Tulsa played good defense, good team defense. Here's a steal by Taphorn. Taphorn trying to take it the distance, and he does. Matt Taphorn has sparked this team in the first meeting with Tulsa in the initial half. Trying to do it here tonight with the Redbirds. That's the type of defense Illinois State coach Bob Donawal teaches. They want to deny that reverse pass, get in the passing lane, and maybe get a steal. Another foul off the ball here in the lane this time. Michael Scott, Michael Scott reporting on number 23. Foul is on Fallon Wakazi, his first. That is the second on the Golden Hurricane. Hey, what, the wheels are turning on both sides, aren't they? Because Gerard Coleman up off the bench replacing Hollifield in the lineup for the Redbirds. Both coaches giving their benches a lot of playing time, giving these young men a real opportunity to show the coaches what they can do. Final player, I gotta like that. Both teams are not physically 100%, so we're gonna see a lot of variances of lineups. Jeff Harris is in the game now for Illinois State, number 23 with the ball. What he likes to do is use that foul line pick and that baseline to get open. Jackson from the outside for two. Four unanswered points, and the Redbirds have caught the Golden Hurricane at six apiece. We're almost seven minutes in first half of play. Dalton's going to take their time, work that baseline pick, work the foul line pick, and just use the clock to get the best possible shot. They want to dictate the tempo. Good ball movement by Tulsa, and we've got a foul coming up on Jackson. Jackson trying to help out defensively against Tracy Moore, guilty of his second personal foul. That is the fifth on Illinois State. Wingard up off the Tulsa bench, number 50 trots back on for the Golden Hurricane. That's the matchup coach Bob Donovan won, Richie Jackson on Tracy Moore. Good size, good quickness on both athletes, Barty. Good chance to cut off Tracy Moore with that matchup. Blair back in, and number 32, Cliff Peterson comes on for Illinois State for the first time tonight. He's playing on a tender ankle and has, again, a touch of that food poisoning that's gone through this team. And Peterson matches up with Tracy Moore. He's got the size advantage, but playing on an injured ankle. Michael Scott, Tracy Moore at the point. Royster on the wing. Don Royster, a starter earlier this year. They want to get that ball to Royster down low. They use him as a passer up high. They don't want him to take that shot up there. We're tied at six apiece. A little more than seven minutes gone by. First half. Forces it a bit. Scott up high for the rebound. Battling another teammate. The ball pops loose to Pemberton. Can't fault the effort, but the execution has been lacking on both sides. Neither team really found a rhythm they feel comfortable with. They both are seen to labor at times. Pemberton up high. Randy Blair now sets it up offensively for the Redbirds. That tears the spot down on that baseline. by the Redbirds. 
Denver as they try to set up for a shot. Colson doing a very good job not allowing the ball to come into the low post area. Randy Blair freed up off the glass. Amazing. All that hard work to keep the ball out of the middle. And Randy Blair hits a running bank shot. <laughs> it's kind of depressing if you're playing defense, but credit Colson. They did a good job. They didn't let the ball come inside. Scott had it tipped away by Harris on the steal. Redbirds leading by two. They can make it four right here. Peterson first shot of the game. Tracy Moore with a major league rebound. They're not going to take the break, Wayne. They're going to bring it down and play it on the half court. Make Illinois State play defense all night long. Wade Jenkins out front. Coach Barnett's theory behind this is he's not shooting well, so he's going to cut down the possessions, not only for his team, but for the other team. And then figure the law, the averages, will pick up and turn around in his favor. Coming up on the halfway mark, first half. Ten to go now on the shot clock. Royster. Rebound battled for, and Pemberton pulls it away again. Pemberton wants to come out. He just motioned to the bench. He's a bit winded. He's probably not feeling very well in his stomach also if he got to touch that food poison. Harris with the up bank, good move. Wingard rips loose the rebound, literally ripped it loose. This is Tracy Moore. Michael Scott in the corner. Probably their best young athlete coming off a couple of injuries himself. Not been a good year injury-wise for the Tulsa team. It won't go on the play for Scott. Illinois State breaks it across. Randy Blair. Harris travels. 9.53 left to go. Neither team in double digits. First half of play. Again, with is a very slow start. Both teams having trouble getting on track offensively. We'll be back. there was a slowdown going on. Wayne, you mentioned the fact that uh, this is a low-scoring game and a little raggedy, people not really into the flow of things. This is an Illinois State basketball team that in overtime scored over 100 points. 102 against Southern, yep. It's amazing what can happen in four or five days, isn't it? Sure is. Say night and day, that's what it's been. There's the field goal shooting in the first half thus far. Which for Tulsa isn't anything unusual for the season because they're only hitting 42 on the year. Boy for three. First three-pointer of the game. Illinois State trailing by one away from the ball again. This time the foul's on Wingard pushing off on Derek Stokes of Illinois State. Wingard can't quite believe the call. His first personal foul, that's the third on the team. Wingard would, would just not let Stokes get the ball inside. He kicked him out beyond the foul lane line, would not let him get down, the ball down the block. Good defense, good effort. Next time you can avoid the foul. Inbounds attempt to Stokes, denied on the play by Tulsa. Wingard got a piece of it, knocked it out of bounds. So the Redbirds will inbound. Wingard working hard. He is, as I mentioned, spent three years in the Army after graduating from high school. Blair can't handle the inbounds pass. Neither can Royster. And spilled on the play is Brian Lloyd on a cross-body block by Matt Taphorn. Boy, that would have made some football recruiters excited. Well, Taphorn's got the size. He could have played football. But he goes after the ball very aggressively. Parker just beats him there. Nothing malicious. Good hard hustle. Parker beating to the spot. Taphorn was going for the ball. You mean Lloyd. Lloyd, excuse me. Parker reports on now for Illinois for Tulsa. He's teaming up with Lloyd in the backcourt. There's the turnover statistic. It's a lot of turnovers for both teams considering it's been a slow down basketball game. Well, Mike, we've been talking uh, Illinois State's averaging about 15 turnovers a game, which is very high for a Bob Donwald coach team. Good ball movement inside Wingard. Nice pass from Sadowski. Five unanswered points by the Golden Hurricane as falls at Tulsa into the lead. Blair at the baseline. Tulsa doing a good job defensively here. Moving their feet. They're helping out well. The rotation is solid. Taphorn on the drive. Missed the puppy inside. 
Wingard had the rebound and traveled. Brown wanted a foul. Brown not happy at all, and I'll tell you what, I agree with him. It looked to me like he was pushed backward, could not maintain his position, was pushed backward by the Illinois State player. Here's the miss by Tapo, now the rebound battle. Wingard looked like uh, Blair pulled him back a little bit. There was a struggle in there, and I'm not so sure he created all of that body movement. Peterson back into the ball game, replacing Derek Stokes. Stokes is a tight end on the uh, Redbird football squad. We've got a couple of football players here tonight in uniform. Good players, too, on the basketball floor. Coleman on a force. Rebound, Brian Lloyd. This a, is Rod Parker. Not a good shot that time. He had three white shirts around. He really rushed that shot. Royster out front. Parker trying to get the step baseline. Coleman clears the board. Oh, and he got Wingard with an elbow in the face. No foul. But Wingard is down for the count. He really took one directly to the nose. He'll feel that one for a long time. That stunned him. See if we can catch it right here. Coleman just clears himself. It wasn't intentional. Probably did commit a foul. He was clearing himself with the rebound. It didn't seem to be intentional. But he hit Wingard right on the button of his nose, didn't he? That's what it looks like. They're working on his nose right now. He's got a bloody nose. Man, I'll tell you what, that's more contact than I saw in the Tyson Holmes fight. <laughs> Watch it again. Again, I, I kind of agree with you, Mike. I, he was just trying to clear the ball, make a turn, and get a pass off. And Wingard was unfortunately in the wrong spot. He might have even stuck his nose in there a little bit. Got a little nosy, as they say, in basketball and paid the price for it. But Wingard, an ex-Army uh, individual back here playing basketball now, is a tough cookie. He'll come back. He's got to collect himself now, though, because that shot hurt. Wade Jenkins comes into the ball game for the Golden Hurricane, replacing Wingard, the sophomore out of Chicago, Carver High School. Tamporn on the inbound. This is Cliff Peterson. Peterson, 6-7, running the point. We've seen a couple different point guards, unusual point guards for both teams tonight, Wayne. Well, we've talked a lot about it. When we've seen Illinois State, they have been in dire need of someone to take over at the point. They really missed Todd Starks, who left the team this season. Away from the ball, Brian Lloyd trying to hold Jeff Harris back. Harris is perpetual motion away from the ball, and Lloyd that time got called for the foul. It is his first, the fourth on the team. Well, when you guard Jeff Harris, you just cannot let him get straightened up at the basketball uh, hoop, get his feet planted, or he's going to shoot it in the basket. That foul may be a little unnecessary. J.D. Barnett and the Golden Hurricane have the lead by three with 7.56 to go. We're coming back to Tulsa after these words. Take a look at the rebounding. Just about even. Illinois State, matter of fact, holding a 7-6 to six edge. Turnovers, 8 for Illinois State and 6 at first. About rebounded only 3 of 16 opponents this season. J.D. Barnett working on the officials. He's talking to Ron Spindler. He's he, really, wants the, he wants retribution is what he wants. He's uh, letting everyone know that he didn't miss that call. That's right. right. <laughs> Harris on the penetration made the fake and was clobbered by Sadowski. Oh, it's getting physical. Second on Sadowski. That is the fifth on Tulsa. Wayne, that's a call. Oh, that, wait a minute. That's a call that many people worry about. They're look calling Jeff, it offensive. Look at Jeff Harris lean into the offensive player. Yes, he did get Sadowski off his feet. But after Sadowski left his feet, Harris leaned into the jumper, and that created the offensive foul. That's 17 fouls. Sadowski now on the other end with the shot. The rebound, Peterson. Here comes Harris. Harris stopped on the play by Parker. Peterson in the lane. Jenkins crashing the boards, and the rebound cleared by Royster. Lloyd on the drive. The fast break by Tulsa really surprises us because going into the ball game and talking to the coaching staff at Tulsa, they really led us to believe it's going to be a half-court game on their part, and they probably wouldn't do much running, if any. 
They have scored seven unanswered points now at the Golden Hurricane. It's been a long time since Illinois State has scored. Gerard Coleman with a four shot, rebound battled for, and on the save attempt, Jeff Sadowski ran out of real estate. Look for Illinois State possibly to pick this tempo up and get into a, or force Tulsa into a running game themselves. Bob Donwald facing the sidelines for Illinois State. John Pemberton back in, put a little more beef in that lineup, that front line. Pemberton, number 53 for Illinois State. And Cliff Peterson, still hurting with that ankle, comes out. Coach Donawell giving Peterson a chance to loosen that ankle up and get it going and see what happens. He's really struggled the last two or three weeks with that ankle injury. Just can't get back to 100%. And that is really a shame when your key player and your senior leader struggles with an ankle injury and you can't use him during the whole game or even the key parts of many big ball games. Coleman lets it go from the foul line this time and finds the range. His first from the field. He has two points and he snaps the seven straight point string by Tulsa. On the drive, Royster is fouled. Not a good foul. Not a good foul by Gerard Coleman. Royster came into the paint. Royster's not a good shooter. Came into the paint, drew the foul, and probably Coleman's best move was to let him shoot it and worry about a rebound. Coleman trying to go up with him. Get a hand in face, let him shoot, and worry about the rebound. Don't try to block a shot on a guy who's not a, really an offensive scoring threat. Donald Royster of the free throw line misses out his first. He is a transfer from Mississippi. Royster shoots just 50% of the free throw line. Very valuable to Tulsa from block to block and on rebound. Royster misses a pair. Rebound back tap. Parker trying to chase down. It was knocked out of play anyway by the Redbirds. So Tulsa retains possession at center court. We're at the six minute mark, 13 to 10. Both teams known for more offensiveness. The tempo definitely in the favor of Tulsa. This is Tracy Moore, number 35. Sadowski, Royster, started by Coleman. Royster nearly gave it away to Blair. Tracy Moore, Parker wants to go inside with it. Tracy Moore, the second or the leading scorer on the Tulsa team, one of the top scorers in the Valley. Two shots so far here in the first mm. half. Rod Parker again at the point. He's Tulsa's version of a true point guard. Look for Moore to score more with Parker at the point. Gives him a chance to get a shot. Moore for three! Just like that one. That's what he does best. Shoots the ball. When he's at the point, Wayne, it's tough for him to start the offense and end up as the shooter. With Parker in there, he can get into shooting position. Tulsa leading it by six. Coleman had it blocked on the play by Royster. Royster comes up with a deflected basketball. Parker sets up. Sadowski wide open, takes it to the lane. Wingard to Parker on the drive. Nicely done, but he left it short. Coleman swings loose with the rebound once again, and when he gets those elbows in action, he's lethal. He showed everybody what he could do with uh, Wingard <laughs> when he stuck his nose in there. Harris from a mile away for three. Earlier we talked about letting Jeff Harris plant those feet, wear those shoulders to the hoop. He's deadly from out there. That would have been three in Chicago Stadium. you got that and some. Tulsa resumes offensively. Their lead sliced to three. But not in any hurry. Wingard gets the roll off the rim. His third from the field, Mike. He's got six points now. Tell you, I've been impressed with Wingard. Uh, Coach Barnett has always talked about using him in a block-to-block -block situation with Royster. He's moved out to the foul line. He's three for three. Here's Jeff Harris for Illinois State. Redbirds trailing by five. Matt Taphorn gets the step on Sadowski. Too high on the bank, but Pemberton taps it home. Well, that was a beautiful tip in. That was from about two people deep. He got his hands on it, kept it alive, and went in the hole. Nice play, Pemberton. 4.09 left to go. First half of play. Delsa leading by three. Seen two good defensive teams. They really play this half-court man-to-man defense well. Wingard on the drive, and he has eight points. Broken nose and all, or whatever happened to his nose. It sure hasn't affected his game. Harris dishes back outside of Pemberton. Taphorn is open for three. Wingard clears the board. 
Maybe that pop in the nose ignited him because he has played fantastic since coming back in the ball game. Jeff Sadowski, Taphorn knocks it away and takes it away. Taphorn's going coast to coast. Taphorn just wanted that ball more than Sadowski. Got in that passing lane and just actually wrestled that ball from him. Wait. Taphorn is hurting. He really is. He may have bumped his knee. That's some knee problems. Wingard again free in the lane. Pemberton isn't picking him up. Ball deflected loose on the floor, knocked out of bounds, and Ron Spittler says it's off the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. It'll belong to Illinois State. Boy, did you see Taphorn? He motioned at his teammate, John Pemberton. Imagine what he was saying was pick up that big guy, number 50. Illinois State will resume offensively. We've got a break of the action. 3.05 left to go. It'll be Redbird basketball when we come back. 20 to 17. Tulsa leading Illinois State. We'll be back. In the action, we saw Matt Tamborn make the steal and go down the floor and actually just wrestle that ball out of Jeff Sadowski's hands. Taphorn's the type of young man you want to play on your team. Competitor, tough, hard-nosed, will do whatever it takes and everything it takes to win the basketball game. A couple of changes in the lineup now for Illinois State. Taphorn's on the bench. He's hurting with a touch of that food poisoning. Harris, an air ball, knocked out of bounds by the Golden Hurricane. So Illinois State gets a reprieve. Also playing good, tough defense. They're rotating well means the defensive players are moving over to help each other out. They're covering the low post extremely well, keeping Illinois State on the perimeter. J.D. Barnett, the Tulsa head coach. This is Randy Blair for Illinois State. Cliff Peterson, number 32, back into the game. Blair on the drive is bumped in a foul as called. Foul here is on Tracy Moore. That's his first five team fouls now on the Redbirds so sure about that one. That one looked uh, somewhat like a nitpicker. One that could, you could take or you could leave. I'll tell you what, they're calling the, the game pretty close, especially away from the ball here. Certainly are. Not that that foul was away from the ball. That was right on it. Stokes outside. Randy Blair at the point. From the outside, Coleman shot won't go, and Gerard Coleman shooting woes continue. Illinois State no offensive rebounds tonight to speak of. They're getting one shot. Tulsa doing an excellent job on the board. Dan Crispin spies a foul inside of the crowd, and it's coming up on Randy Blair. Blair's second personal. Team is over the limit. Free throws coming up. There's J.D. Coach Barnett struggling this year with all the new players and young players. This is really a critical time of the year for his ball team. We would really like to see them continue to Ball game. The goal has to be let's get better each ball game to try to accomplish something that we didn't do last time during this game and then move on. To show that progress, Wayne, that they've got a real bright future here. Tracy Moore is scoring at 21.7 points a game overall this season. Now has five points in the contest here tonight with 2.16 left to go first half of play. Tulsa's lead again is five. Ricky Jackson back into the contest for Illinois State, replacing Randy Blair. Boy, the substitutions tonight on both ends have been hot and heavy. Well, that's probably because of the problems with the intestinal-type flu that um, Illinois State had and some of the injuries that uh, Tulsa has. Plus, both teams trying to play a lot of people, looking for that combination tonight to get them going, to start things clicking. Jackson out front, guarded by Moore. Jeff Harris and Brian Lloyd jumped right on him. Jackson gets the step on the drive. Rebound ripped away by Tracy Moore. Moore out of the backcourt in a hurry. Lloyd out front penetrates. Jenkins at the baseline. Here's a tap inside by Wingard. He's got five for the field and ten points. Big Ray Wingard shot that hand through a crowd. Tipped it in. Good effort. Seven-point lead by the Golden Hurricane. Largest lead for either side tonight. I like Illinois State right now with Ricky Jackson at the point guard. He may be one of the one or two players on the Illinois State team that can penetrate, take the ball to the basket, make something happen. Harris trying to set up around a pick by Coleman, didn't have the shot. Derek Stokes 
tight end on the football team, number 35 in the game for Illinois State. Obviously, bringing Stokes out is a move to shore up their rebounding problem. Brian Lloyd flies it loose. His pass is off the mark. He led Ter Tracy Moore a bit too much. Moore was there. The pass is just a little too long. Brian Lloyd rushed it a little bit. Well, this is the best I've seen Brian Lloyd play in his career at Tulsa now in its second year. It was a disappointment earlier this season. He had a good preseason camp. He played well in the fall in October and November in the practice sessions. Couldn't quite do it. They're not going to allow the substitution of Taphorn right now. He didn't come off and play very well in the early season games. But he's playing well here tonight for Tulsa. Brian Lloyd has been known as a defensive specialist so far at Tulsa. Good anticipation by Jenkins. Jenkins reloads the offense. Jenkins utilized that quickness, ran right through the passing lane, found the basketball. No shot clock, less than a minute to go. 20 seconds remaining in the first half. See if the ball finds its way to Tracy Moore's hand or Ray Wingard. They've had the hot hands and or the leading scorer so far this year. Time winding down on the Golden Hurricanes. Jenkins and a foul coming up. I believe it's going to be on Peterson. Not a good foul right there. Not a good foul. Timing wasn't good for that one. His first personal foul. Team is over the limit. Let's see if we can pick it up. There wasn't much of a foul here. Well, he reached out a little bit and got him. Yep, he hooked him a bit. You've got that right, Wayne. He reached right in there. Jenkins had him beat on the drive. Probably caught him flat-footed. You get caught flat-footed defensively. Usually your arm goes out trying to hold that offensive player down. Wade Jenkins at the free throw line for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Sophomore from Chicago. Leaves it short. Rebound Lloyd on the fadeaway. He's short. We've got another foul, and this time it's on Michael Scott with one second left in the half. Not a bad foul. Scott was going for the rebound. He knew it was a last-second shot by Lloyd. Was going for the rebound, which is what he should be. He's a freshman. He was aggressive. Not a bad foul. Only 16 fouls, so it's a non-shooting affair. Let's see if we can pick it up inside. Oh, yeah. He went over the back that time of Gerard Coleman. No question about that foul. One second to go now. No foul shot, so again, the foul wasn't that bad. Now Illinois State has to take it out of bounds. It just hurts you on a team foul situation, and the half is over. Randy Blair on the inbounds. Blair to Peterson. The baseball throw is well off the mark at the half. So in what can be termed a defensive struggle, Tulsa leads at halftime with takes thus far in the first half of play. Tulsa leading Illinois State by seven at halftime. Let's take a look at the standings at this juncture in the race in the Missouri Valley Conference. There you get a look. Drake leading the way, 4-1, along with Illinois State. Redbirds playing here with injury and illness. That loss to Loyola on Monday is really going to hurt Illinois State when it comes down to tournament time, NCAA I'm talking, because now with a 9-7 and seven record, and seven losses, you got to figure they're going to pick up a few more in conference play. It's going to be tough. They're going to be sitting right on the fence and maybe be in a position where they have to win the Valley Tournament to make it. The margin for error for Illinois State or the margin of a few more defeats it's very, very fine right now. Although they the have played a tough non-conference schedule. No and question. I, no doubt about that. They have played probably one of the toughest non-conference schedules in the conference. Bradley and Drake, uh, you see they're standing in the conference race and overall, both in position to make the NCAA tournament. There seems to be a magic number, and it seems to be 20 victories. Both appear to be on track for 20 wins. Bradley with that Sterling 11-2 record. Their only loss at Memphis State and then at home to Illinois State. Wichita State. Well, a lot of people are talking about them. The coaches seem to feel Wichita State is the team to watch out for in this Valley race. A lot of people think when it gets down to tournament time, Wichita State could be there. They also have played a very tough non-conference schedule. Coach Eddie Fogler and staff doing a good, a very fine job again this year. Uh, Creighton and Southern Illinois, two teams that seem to be dramatically improved from last year, along with Drake, who's at the top of the conference. But Southern Illinois getting some fine play out of Steve Middleton and Rick Shipley and moving right along and 
playing some very good basketball right now. There are the players of the week, co-players of the week of the Missouri Valley Conference. Sam Rourke of Drake and Illinois State's Gerard Coleman. Rourke, 6'6", sophomore from Kansas City, Kansas. Wyandotte High School, 15 points, 10 rebounds in a 61-54 victory over Tulsa last Thursday. He followed that contest with a 14-point, 13-rebound performance in a 61-58 victory over Wichita State. Rourke leads the conference in rebounding with an 8.7 average. And Coleman, the 6'7", sophomore from North Chicago, Illinois, scored a career-high 28 points in Illinois State's 102-98 overtime win last Saturday over Southern Illinois. His two-game totals, Illinois State also beat Indiana State last week, 42 points, 16 rebounds, two block shots. Illinois State and Drake tied for the conference lead, as we saw a moment ago with four and one records. We'll be back with more halftime analysis coming up after these messages. Staff of play, it was a first half certainly of mistakes and, and I guess of lost tempo because neither team really picked up a consistent tempo in that first half. Both teams very sluggish, almost lethargic. Maybe it had to do with some injuries that both teams have had coming into the ball game. Maybe it had to do on the Illinois State side with some food poisoning they got today when they were eating. But no matter what it is, somebody needs to start the engines because the engines aren't running tonight. And that really has led to this ball game, which has been really a ball game of who makes the fewest turnovers. Well, with 9.53 left to go to tell you the kind of first half we had, it was 8-6 to six at that point. They had 14 points between them halfway through. Let's take a look at the keys we talked about in the early portion of the telecast here tonight. We'll start with Illinois State. Rebounding a big key you mentioned at the beginning. They really haven't been beaten badly on the board. They haven't gotten many uh, offensive rebounds. That has hurt them. No second shot. Defensively now, Tulsa hasn't really turned up the pressure half court or full court. What Tulsa's done is played defensively on the inside very, very well, denying that inbound pass on the Illinois State offense. All right, now let's take a look at the Tulsa Golden Hurricane because at times they will anticipate so well defensively and he takes it all the way. Last couple years of watching that young man really become an admirer. What a competitor. Here's Tracy Moore with a three-point shot. He didn't really square up on it, but he's got that touch from the outside. Great wrist and hand action on Tracy Moore's shot. Well, three-point marksman for Illinois State, Jeff Harris, one of the best in the country, and this is from a mile away. That would have been three points in Chicago Stadium, as I mentioned. If you happen to notice where his feet were at at that point, that's a four-point shot. <laughs> All right, again, here is Taphorn with the hands, knocking the ball away, takes it away that time and goes the distance with another for two points. Matt Taphorn in that first half, four points, both coming off steals. And really the story of the first half for Tulsa was Ray Wingard. Watch this tip in right here. Right place, right time. That long arm snuck in there. Wingard has had a bang up first half. He really has played well at both ends of the floor. Defensively, he's done a great job at the block area, defending against Illinois State's inside game kicking the, play, the Illinois State players away from the basket defensively. He has had a bang-up first half. We'll be back at Tulsa. Take a look at the statistics and come back to game action after this timeout. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom Denon, your host every week for the Digger Phelps Show. And for the year, the Redbirds really struggling. And, of course, the rebounding edge now belongs to the Golden Hurricane, thanks to Mr. Wingard. 18 to 14 of the turnover. Well, they're both bad. Uh, Ten turnovers for the Redbirds, nine for the Golden Hurricane. Uh, that would come out to, what, 20 turnovers for Illinois State and 18 for the Golden Hurricane. You just can't do that and win consistently. You can't make that many turnovers in a low-scoring game, as this one seems to be going that way and win the basketball game because in a low scoring game there are going to be fewer shots fewer possessions if you turn it over you obviously reduce your opportunities to score leading scorer ray wingard watch this action uh, in the first half of play right here this is what happened to ray wingard watch this he got hammered didn't phase him a bit came back strong coming back live we've got a foul inside Tony Hollifield picks up his third personal foul for Illinois State down low. Three personal fouls on Hollifield, who has just two points here tonight. Hollifield is averaging 14 points a game. Good point. He's been very quiet, along with Peterson. Cliff Peterson, although he is playing on a bad ankle, has been playing sparingly. Both those young men have been very quiet offensively. Tracy Moore is three of three from the free throw line tonight. 
Makes good on a pair. He now has seven points. Tulsa extends the advantage now. Nine-point lead for the Golden Hurricane. Largest of the evening. Hollifield on the block. Jackson back out front. Hollifield has been virtually no factor here tonight. That foul trouble. Taphorn pops open. Rebound back tapped, and Taphorn chases down. Very resourceful player, senior. Probably the first, second shot opportunity Illinois State has had tonight. And they were unable to capitalize. Sadowski now for Tulsa. Notice Tracy Moore limping a little bit, favoring an ankle, which he had turned earlier this week in practice. Let's see if that becomes a factor for Tracy Moore. Jenkins was fouled before the shot attempt, so the basket will not count. Or I should say Jenkins committed the foul. Pushed off to get open, Wayne. Young player, freshman, trying to make his move on the basement, on the baseline, got a little excited, pushed off. J.D. Barnett isn't the only one who didn't see that foul. Taphorn out front. There's Jackson. Again, away from the ball, we've got a foul. This time they've caught Jeff Harris. Harris picks up his second personal foul. That is the second on Illinois State. Boy, they are calling it a tight, aren't they, away from the ball? And that's unusual for Jeff Harris, a senior, very intelligent player, plays hard, typically does not make mistakes like that. Jeff Sadowski guarded on the play by Taphorn. Sadowski looking for help now. Just did get it away in time to Jenkins. There's Brian Lloyd at a very good first half of play, not only in the scoring standpoint, he had four points, or five points, but he also uh, had a couple of steals and a few rebounds. Good defense this time down the floor by Illinois State. They're really pressuring the ball, trying to get into passing lane. Tracy Moore tried to force that pass. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by the Redbirds. Wait, I think Tracy Moore's ankle is really bothering him. He's not jumping. That time he tried to jump and couldn't get the lift off the ground even to make that pass. And he hobbled down the floor last time. That ankle must be bothering him. The inbound to Jenkins. There's Tracy Moore for three. Brian Lloyd had position on the rebound, but Hollowfield takes it away. Here comes Jackson. Beautiful move. Blocking foul against Tulsa. Wade Jenkins apparently did not have position. His second, that is the second team foul on Tulsa. I mentioned earlier that Ricky Jackson has the ability, one of the few players on the Illinois State team, to penetrate, takes it right down the pipe, Jenkins was still moving. That's a tough call. Ooh, that, that is, is a, a tough, tough call. Game. Very close. Give Jenkins a A on his report card for helping out defensively. Give Ricky Jackson an A for taking the ball to the basket, making something happen. Jackson off the mark on the free throw. Jackson shooting 75.7% from the foul line. Averaging 5.4 points a game, as you saw a moment ago. Only shooting 38% overall from the field. One out of two at the line. Three points for Ricky Jackson. Well, Jackson's in there at the point. He had quickness, and he's probably their best perimeter defensive player. If he can ever get that offensive point position down, Illinois State will be a much better basketball team. Lloyd wanted to go to Wingard inside. Sadowski threw it away, trying to hit Wingard at the back door. Good defense that time by Illinois State. Everyone was moving. Everyone was rotating defensively, helping out, causing that pass to go wide of the mark. Michael Scott reports on. J.D. Barnett had contemplated redshirting him this year. Michael Scott, of course, had a bad foot injury and missed all of the fall drills. Apparently, they're not going to redshirt him. Arizona High School Player of the Year last year. Big recruit for Coach J.D. Barnett. Good move by Harris. Trying to take it in among the trees and lost the handle on it. Wingard picks up. Pumped too many times. Should have just taken it to the basket after the first pump instead of using another one. Wade Jenkins on the perimeter. This is Scott. Moore gets the step baseline. Moore gets it back. Won't count. Foul before the shot attempt. Tony Hollowfield picks up his fourth personal foul. That's the third on Illinois State. Tracy Moore shows you persistence. This is the first time. 
is persistent enough to follow his shot. Most guys will quit after the first one. Persistence pays off. I beg your pardon on the foul. It is not on Hollifield. I saw Ron Spittler point directly at Hollifield, but he called the foul on Jeff Harris. Third personal foul on Harris. The inbounds to Jenkins, knocked out of bounds, and last touch by Tulsa. Quick turnover there, gives it back to the Redbirds. Matt Taphorn got his hand in the passing lane, deflected it off the Tulsa man, standing out of bounds. The Taphorn kid, I tell you, he's smart, he's tough, he plays hard, he's a winner. I want him on my team. There's the turnover situation. Taphorn on the drive, baseline, blocking foul on Wingard, did not have position. No question about that call. Second personal on Wingard, that's the third on Tulsa. Never got to a stop position. Taphorn will toss in on the inbounds quickly to Blair. Had it swatted away on the play by Jenkins. Nearly goaltending three-point drive to the outside. Won't go for Jackson. Coleman tries loose the rebound. Here's a steal by Lloyd. Illinois State looks a little rattled right now. They're not into their offenses set very fluidly right now. They really need to back it up, settle down, and get the ball where Coach Bob Donald wants it. There's a mugging inside. The ball up for grabs, tied up, and it'll belong to Tulsa on the alternating possession. Tulsa defense has turned up the heat here. Defensively, they're really getting after it. That's Tracy Morrow still down on the play. Watch it again. There's Gerard Coleman. Look at this. Three white shirts on the dribbler. It's very tough to dribble when you have three opponents pounding at you. And that's the defensive move that was key. Tracy Moore turned that ankle a bit. There he is. They got to get him out of the ball game. I mean, if JD doesn't watch out, this kid's going to be gone for four weeks. What's ankles, he going to do then? Ankles have this funny tendency not to get better if you stay on them and keep pounding them. That's probably one of the good things that Illinois State is probably trying to do with Cliff Peterson, spot playing him and making sure that he has good recovery time on that ankle. They played Peterson just 12 minutes the other night against Loyola, and they took a loss because of it. Hollifield had it blocked on the play inside. I believe that was Jenkins once again. Oh, they rule. Let's see. Hang on. Did they score it? No. They no, they did not. Call. Change the call. Yep, they were going to. They were going to count it. Let's see if we can catch the ball here. Wade Jenkins from behind on the defensive rotation. Oh, Jenkins gets up, doesn't he? He is a tremendous leaper. That was a good call. Taphorn came to the basket for the second shot and knocked it out of bounds. Good call. They were going to call goaltending, but reversed the call and ruled it out of bounds, and now the Golden Hurricane give it right back. That's the, been the story all night, virtually. When you're 4-11 and 0-3 and in the league, you have a tendency as a team to really tighten up. Even and when you're leading by 10 at home. Especially when you're leading, because usually you haven't been in that position. Somehow you have to find a way to relax, to enjoy this lead, and expand on it. You can't play tight. Royster back into the ball game, number 31 for Tulsa. Illinois State resumes offensively, trailing by 10. Four minutes into the second half. Blair almost threw it away. Pembert in travel. Whitgard did a good job of kicking. Pemberton out away from the three-second or the paint area. Got him moving, created a turnover with a bobble ball. Randy Blair is coming out of the ball game in favor of Jeff Harris right away after that pass. 15-52 left to go. It's been a comedy of errors, and Tulsa leading by 10. I'm State Farm Agent Jim Cornwell. When I first insured... 20 years of training at Illinois State. Also the husband of Lady Redbird track coach, Joyce Keefe. We wish Doc the very best. There you get a look at J.D. Barnett and his huddle. Want to remind you to catch the excitement of the Pepsi-Cola Missouri Valley Conference Basketball Tournament, March 5th, 6th, and 8th in Peoria, Illinois. Tickets for all sessions are still available. Phone 309-677-2625 for more information. Wayne, the way this Missouri Valley Conference race is shaping up, that is going to be a tremendously tough three days of college basketball. Tell you what, they're pretty evenly matched for the most part, aren't they? They certainly are. Lloyd to Wingard up high. Parker backs off on the dribble. Lloyd with the bullet feed inside. Wingard forced it up. 
didn't catch anything. Taphorn hauls it in. So J.D. Barnett has Tracy Moore out now. Probably trying to rest that ankle some. Harris for three. His second three-pointer of the game. He's got six points. Confusion on the part of Tulsa that time. Nobody was guarding Jeff Harris, and that is a big no-no. Illinois State was 8 of 19 three-point shots the other night in Chicago against Loyola. Harris was 4 of 9, 4 of 8 in the first half. That's Parker out front. With this lineup Tulsa has, they're really trying to look inside with that ball. They don't have a real good perimeter shooter out there. That was a good shot with that lineup, a real good shot. Michael Scott on the penetration. Tulsa's lead is nine. Good ball movement by the Redbirds, and Hollifield had it stuffed away. Michael Scott slipped in there and caught him from behind. Parker picks up his first personal foul. That is the fourth on the Golden Hurricane. Non-shooting affair. Tracy Moore, obviously that ankle injury having an effect on his game offensively. But also I think, and you brought up a good point of the first half, he played a lot of point guard, and that's going to change your game considerably. Extremely uh, tough assignment to play point guard and lead your team in scoring. Harris on the drive, and offensive is the call, I believe. Yep, they've got Harris on an offensive foul. That's his fourth. It is the fourth team foul. Jeff Harris took off down the middle. Somewhat out of control. Probably should have pulled up and popped his jumper instead of charging into that crowd. Here's Tracy Moore. Jeff Sadowski in the corner. Started by Hollifield. With Royster and Wingard inside. Going from block to block. Look for Tulsa to pound that ball inside into the three-point area for an easy shot. Just over six minutes into the second half. Tulsa leading by nine. Tracy Moore penetrates a bit. Wingard takes the pass out front. Here's the patience, the controlling of the tempo. Tulsa trying to create right now. Seven to go on the shot clock. Sadowski to the hoop on the drive. Beautifully done. That's the guy that I would not have guessed would have been taking that shot when he did. Golden Hurricane have lost six in a row. They're beginning to play with some confidence here in the second half, and they have controlled the tempo from the outset. Harris for three. Royster the rebound. With Royster and Wingard inside at the low post type areas, both defensively and offensively, Tulsa really has some beat and some strong rebounding potential with those two guys. Royster on the block against Pemberton. Good pass to Sadowski. Royster really made that shot. He passed it through the three point or the three second area. Beautiful bounce pass. The Sadowski wide open on the other side of the lane. Redbirds need a timeout, and they take it right here with 12.46 left to go. Tulsa's on a run. They now lead by 13. Hold it! Anyone who lines up with us knows that we don't mess the second best. Hey, that's three second lane with all the bodies in the way. This is a tough pass. Find Sadowski. That was as good a pass as you'll see. It's very tough to make that pass. You have to not only have great court awareness, you have to drill the ball through the paint. Just did get it past uh, Matt Taphorn. Redbirds have slipped behind now by 13 points, and we have 12.46 left to go. This has been as good a stretch of basketball that Tulsa's played in quite some time. They hung in pretty well against Memphis State. They've had a tough stretch otherwise, though. Tulsa here at home over the last seven seasons. I mentioned in the decade of the 1980s, they had only lost eight ball games here at the convention center, but they've already lost five this season. Well, this guy, Coach J.D. Barnett, doesn't have to prove to anybody that he can coach basketball. What he's doing now is trying to blend new people, young players, into his program with only one senior. He lost an awful lot off that team. He's got some good-looking young players out recruiting some players. He'll be just fine. Illinois State retains possession. Much to the chagrin of the Golden Hurricane and their fans. 
Indiana State has upset Drake, 84-79. A big win for Ron Green and his program in Terre Haute. Creighton and Southern Illinois are tied at 46 at the half. This is a crucial time now for Tulsa. With 12 minutes to go and a 13-point lead, they would like to see their score continue upward and holding Illinois State at about the same level they are. If they can get over the hump now, they won't have to worry about a confidence factor down the stretch drive. Seven to go on the shot clock. Coleman is off the mark, and Coleman chases down. One of the few second rebounds and second shot opportunities Illinois State has created. That fouls on Don Royster, a push. His first personal, now five team fouls on Tulsa. Four team fouls thus far on the Redbirds of Illinois State. One other score in the Valley to report for you. Bradley leads West Virginia 20 to 15, 13 minutes left to go. First half of play. Peterson triggers on the inbound for Illinois State. Both teams have gone the whole game in man to man. Good, tough man to man, I may add. Very impressive, both efforts defensively. This is Peterson, number 32. Hollowfield inside, and the leading field goal shooter in Illinois State history has two. He's four points here tonight, his first two points of the second half. He hasn't gotten too many shots either. Tracy Moore, Wingard reverses to Jenkins. Knocked away by Stokes, last touch by Illinois State. Also back with Tracy Moore at the point, trying to run the show. Good hands in the passing lane, right where coach Bob Donawald would want the defensive player play. The next best thing is being able to tip that ball back toward your basket, go out and pick it up and score an easy one. The inbounds to Royster. Tracy Moore out at the point, on the drive past Stokes. Good feed, Jenkins, he was clobbered by Coleman. Tracy Moore winching, that drives the basket, which was exceptional. It caused him some pain in the ankle. The pass that the drive brought is beautiful. Passes right around the defense. What a pass that is. Gerard Coleman, second personal foul. Five team fouls now in Illinois State. He paid the price on that one. He got the job done, found the open man, but he's hurting some with that ankle. Wade, Wade plenty of time left, too, Wayne. That could be a factor. Wade Jenkins at the free throw line, 70% free throw shooter. Now has three points in the contest. Rod Parker comes on for Tracy Moore. Maybe they'll let the uh, trainer take a look at that ankle or give him a blow here and rest it because he was uh, winching. You could tell by his facial expressions that that caused him some problems on that penetration. Jenkins converts a pair. 13-point lead for Tulsa. 11-20 left to go. These are the Redbirds of Illinois State. Tulsa in a matchup zone this time down the floor. Switching from a man to a matchup, trying to put some confusion into the offensive execution of Illinois State. Hollafield dishes off on the drive to Rod Coleman. It won't go. Taps it home, and we've got a foul. Hang on. They are going to wave off the bucket, and the foul is on Coleman, pushing off on the rebound. Coach Bob Donawald is not happy with that call whatsoever. Three personal fouls on is Gerard Coleman, so if you look at their foul situation, and we will in a moment, watch this. Coleman makes a nice pump fake, gets the defense off his feet, and I'll tell you what, he didn't foul anybody. I didn't see teammate. a foul there at all. No, not at all. I didn't nice see it the move. first time or the second time. Jackson trying to trigger a steal. Coleman can't control, it's up for grabs now. Picked up by the Golden Hurricane, Wade Jenkins clears. Here's Parker. Also has to be more careful with their passes. Illinois State doing a good job getting their passing lane. That time they almost intercepted the pass, kicking it down the floor for an easy two. Royster way outside. Jeff Sadowski coming up on the halfway mark, second half. Parker penetrates and leans in. Hollowfield clearing the rebound, Illinois State resumes. Also back in that 1-2-2 two, two matchup zone. Looks like a man-to-man, -man, but they're actually playing a zone. 
Peterson down low, trying to post up on Royster, gives it up to Coleman, and again he comes up short. Coleman gets it back, he's on the floor, they tie it up, a jump ball indication, and the arrow pointing in the direction of the Golden Hurricane. That's twice now, Coleman has really shown me something with his ability to follow his shot. Not quitting, staying after the ball. They took one away from him last time, but he didn't quit. He goes in for the second shot, doesn't really have good balance, but credit him for the effort. Gerard Coleman was one of six from the field in the first half. He's missed at least three times here in the second half. But the effort's been there. Wade. Sure has. Really stayed after it on the board. As we mentioned, he was the co-player of the week last week in the Missouri Valley. Had an outstanding week. He struggled this week in games at Loyola and here in Tulsa. He went home against uh, Loyola and really kind of... Played a little tight. Uh, Mike, I saw that game. He seemed to be a little tight. That happens when you're... Trying to impress the home folks. The older you get in your career, that won't happen again. Brian Lloyd, and he is fouled by Peterson. Peterson reached over, tried to hold back after Lloyd made a good move to get around him. That's 17 fouls now on the Redbirds with 9.29 left to go in the game. Close to 66% foul shooting team on the year. So being in foul, being in foul trouble, Illinois State, might not be a big factor because Tulsa hasn't been a great foul shooting team. Peterson comes out in favor of Harris for Illinois State. What that foul trouble could do is find out whether you have a bench or not. Brian Lloyd connects on his first 11 other. Tulsa's five of five from the free throw line here in the second half. Kind of shot that uh, for the year mark down the drain, didn't it? Scott replaces Sadowski in the lineup for the Golden Hurricane. Sadowski gets a nice round of applause from the crowd here. He's done a very good job for Coach Barnett since coming back to the team after a short suspension a few games ago. Brian Lloyd now with nine points. He has been a factor in this ballgame, and I don't mean just because he scored nine points thus far. If Tulsa can keep this lead right now at this level, they could be in good shape. Hollifield made a quick move to the bucket. The defender, Don Royster, did not have position, and he picked up his second personal foul, 16 fouls on Tulsa. You have to be set stationary. You cannot be leaning. He never got there. Good call. Illinois State basketball. There's Bob Donwald on the Redbird bench. Jackson for three. Coleman inside. Travel. Shuffled those that pivot foot. At the baseline. Might have received a little help that time from Wade Jenkins, who got <laughs> caught behind him. I think he got a little help from Wade, but got away with it. 15-point lead for Tulsa. Coming up on nine minutes left to be played. Tulsa now needs to make sure that they don't get carried away with themselves and get fat and happy with this lead. Lloyd with three! Big shot right now. That'll get the crowd revved up, get him into the game. Hitting shots like that after going 42% on the year will bring you back. That'll help your confidence. It's a positive situation. 18-point lead for the Golden Hurricane with 8.40 left to go. Timeout, Illinois State. We'll be back. Or pulls up, and we've got a foul coming up, I believe, right here. Or do we? Tracy Moore off to the races here. You can tell that ankle is definitely bothering him by the facial expression. Tulsa inbounds. As we resume, Scott in the corner. There's Lloyd. Tracy Moore had to come out of the game. Illinois State with the rebound of the person of Valentine. Or make that on the field. They need to put a couple three-pointers up and convert. Taphorn can't find the range from there tonight. We've got a foul coming up right here on Rod Parker, his second personal foul. That is 17 fouls now. On Tulsa, 7.50 left to go. Not a good foul. You don't want to foul a big guy out on the floor when he's definitely out of his range. Tracy Moore sitting down, the trainer working on his ankle. Tulsa needs him back in there as soon as possible. The trainer keeping that ankle, soothing the ankle, rubbing it, 
stoppage in play a moment ago as Tracy Moore has to be taken out of the game by the official. Coleman nets the first. He'll have another. Gerard has struggled. He only has three points here tonight. Basketball is a game of angles, sharp cuts, pivots. And if your ankle's sore and hurting, you can't make those plays. Gerard nets a pair at the line. He's about one for nine from the floor. Again, Indiana State has upset break 84-78, second conference loss of the season for the Bulldogs, who came into tonight's game, as I mentioned, tied at Illinois State at 4-1 and one atop the Missouri Valley Conference. Illinois State that time picked up Wayne at half court, extended that defensive pressure. They need to get back in this ball game. The way to get back is defensive pressure, converting on the offensive end by either making the original shot or getting a second and third put back. For the game, Illinois State is shooting under 28%, under 30%, I should say, 28.5%. When you're shooting like that, you have to rely on the putback, the second shot. Scott penetrates, pulls up, had to adjust the shot. Foul on the rebound. Couple of substitutions, Wingard and Jamal West coming in for Tulsa. Question. Foul is on Hollowfield. Question Tulsa fans have to be asking now, how long can, can they go without Tracy Moore? How long can they hold this lead at 16 points? Once that lead starts to evaporate, I'll bet you Coach J.D. Barnett comes back with Tracy Moore. Tulsa shooting 44% and Royster misses at the line. Coleman, the rebound. That foul on Hollowfield, by the way, was his fourth. Look for Moore using that baseline, excuse me, look for Harris using that baseline pick to free himself for a couple three-pointers. Coming up short on the play, Tony Hollowfield, and the ball knocked out of bounds by the Redbirds. Boy, this has been an extremely frustrating experience this second half for Illinois State from the field. Coming back with John Pemberton to try to get a little more muscle inside to get some of those second and third shots. Coach Bob Donawalt not happy with the rebounding offensively right now. Tony Hollifield leads the game with four points. He averages 14 points a contest. Reister has to chase down. Halfhorn nearly took it away. Also milking that clock now, making sure they get something that they want using as much as, of the clock as possible. Jamal West out front. 15 to go on the shot clock. He's a two-point guard, football player. He's gonna have to run that show while Tracy Moore's on the oh, bench. Oh, trying to mean pass inside for Wingard and last touch by Tulsa. Illinois State gets it back. Boy, he tried to thread it through a needle hole that I don't think was there. That pass did not <laughs> make Coach J.D. Barnett happy. We saw a shot of him. There's his counterpart, Bob Donawald. He's not much happier. Boy, both these guys are pulling people in and out of the game because Jamal West has just left the contest. Rod Parker back on. There's Harris to tap horn. For three. Pembert in the rebound. That's what he's in there for, to get a rebound so they get a second shot at the basket offensively. Pembert on the block. Traveling on Harris. That looked funny, but I'm not so sure that he shuffled his feet. What the Illinois State bench was talking to him about is that why did you fake? You had the shot. They were upset because he didn't shoot it when he received the ball. 5.45 left to go. There's the turnover situation. Elsa's taking better care of the ball here in the second half. 17, Wayne, too many for Illinois State. It's been the story this season. Really, that's one, been one of their Achilles heels, that and rebounding. Lloyd for three. Blair the rebound. Has it taken away by Lloyd from behind and Blair goes over the top and commits the foul. Randy Blair third. A foul of frustration. That's something as a coach you just hate to see. Randy Blair has the ball. He gets it stolen. Then he turns around and commits a foul. He really puts the icing on the cake. That's not going to make a coach happy. You mentioned earlier about the turnovers. And coach Bob Donawald has been a coach who's been in this business a long time well respected for the way he teaches the game and, and how turnover free a team play. This is an unusual year for a team. It really is. In that regard, they're averaging just a little over 15 turnovers a game. Lloyd at the free throw line has had an outstanding ball game. Brian Lloyd now with 13 points. Some of these young players really have given Coach J.D. Barnett's team a shot in the arm. Sadowski, uh, 
Floyd. Parker's done a good job off the bench. One out of two at the line. Taphorn reaching for the rebound for Illinois State. They have to be in an up-tempo situation. They have to look for the shots like that one. Harris over the backboard. <laughs> There's the <laughs> That'll give everybody a break. I don't think anyone on the floor could leave that high, huh? I'm Wade Jenkins. Let's give way to try this one. That's so high, I don't think anyone wants to even try. <laughs> one of the cheerleaders gave her the old college try. She'll never get that. Whoa! Oh. How about that? <laughs> if you've got a grant left, give it to that lady, yes, huh? Yes, sir. She's got some live legs. All right. There she is. Rather proud, it should be. Here's the pressure by Illinois State. Redbirds have to try to get back in. They trail by 17. Royster missed the slam but was fouled. Pemberton, first personal foul. Did you see Don Royster's eyes when he hit mid oh. with this ball? He was going all the way, wasn't he? He just out quick Pemberton to the basket. But when he hit mid court, I could tell the look on his face. He was going to take it to the hole. Don Royster, 0 for 3 at the foul line thus far tonight. Make it 0 for 4. They need to convert one. The clock has stopped. They need to get one of these two. The clock stopping is in favor of Illinois State. 17-point lead. 18-point lead now for Tulsa. 5.08 left to go. Randy Blair. Harrison Taphorn are the two guys that will be looking to shoot that three-point play. Coleman just can't get the bounce. Pemberton puts it in off the glass. Good weak side rebounding by John Pemberton. Pinned his defender in, got the long rebound, and converted. 4.40 left to go. Tulsa resumes offensively. They have made it a possession game. There's been very little running here tonight. Some timely fouls on the part of Illinois State right now. I mean timely by who you foul. Because Tulsa's not a good foul shooting team, could really help the Redbirds out. Michael Scott reverses to Royster. There's Wingard back in the game. I haven't seen a lot of Wingard here in the second half. He was outstanding in the first half. Tulsa using that clock to their advantage. Sadowski in the lane, and we've got a foul called, and it's on Blair. He can't believe it. The sophomore. Out of Peoria, Illinois, Richwoods High School. He's had a tough time. That would be his fourth. Four personal fouls now on Blair. Harris has four. Blair has four. So does Hollifield. Three on Gerard Coleman. Jeff Sadowski's given Coach J.D. Barnett a good effort tonight. Takes it to the paint. Good faking. Gets Taphorn on his, off his feet. Sadowski, nice-looking young player. We didn't see him last time these two teams met. He was suspended in for that game. Harris. This is Taphorn. An air ball. The rebound controlled by Illinois State. Randy Blair and a foul coming up on Tulsa. Coach Bob Donowell not real happy with that Taphorn shot that time. He forced a two-point shot almost into the paint. I really feel they're looking for Taphorn or Harris to shoot that three-pointer. Coach Bob Donowell very unhappy. Takes Tap going out to talk to him. They need the three-pointer now, not the two-pointer. Four personal fouls now on Ray Wingard. Who has cooled off some here in the second half, would you say, Wayne? Yes, sir. Hasn't played as much here in the second half. Randy Blair connects on his first. He'll have another. Once he picked up that third foul, he had a long stint on the bench. If Blair converts, looks for the full court pressure. Makes good on a pair. 3.57 left to go. A couple of changes. Tracy Moore coming back in along with Brian Lloyd for Tulsa. The Golden Hurricanes have had their lead sliced from 18 to 14 with 3.57 left to be played here in Tulsa. We'll be just under 50% for the season, which is not bad shooting. A couple factors leading into that low shooting percentage tonight. One is that the team really has had a touch of food poisoning. Yep. And two, Tulsa has played some really nice Defense. Good team rotation, good help side, good pressure on the ball. Fred, don't take anything away from Tulsa. They've helped 
alone dramatically. Illinois State for shooting night. Salsa shooting 40.5%, so they're not burning the nets by any means. But they haven't set the nets on fire all year, so they're not far off. They're about two percentage points down from where they normally are. They shoot about 42% for the season. Salsa playing on the lead, 343 left to go. Redbirds can ill afford to let Tulsa run this clock down. If they do, it'll be lights out. The obvious foul on Coleman is his fourth. Stop the clock. Putting Royster at the foul line. Scott at the foul line, excuse me. About a step off, just one step out of that passing lane. Caused him to meet Scott's body and create the foul. Don Royster comes back on, replacing Tracy Moore again, who continues to hobble with that problem, that ankle problem. The game, ball game for Tracy Moore. He really physically uh, had a tough night. Seven points thus far in the game for Moore. Michael Scott at the line, missed the free throw. Royster got the long carol. Not a good time if you're an Illinois State fan. Clock continues to run. You have to get those missed shots and go back down to your end of the floor. Tulsa will milk the shot clock as long as they can. 318 left to go in the game. Tulsa's missed some free throws down the stretch here, but Illinois State has been unable to capitalize. Foul is on Stokes, his first. Well, they put Royster on the foul line two times ago. He made one of two. They put Michael Scott on the foul line. He missed his first one, but Tulsa got the rebound. Now they go back to Don Royster. He gets fouled on this baseline drive but he's not an exceptionally good foul shooter. The trick is Illinois State has to get the rebound on the missed shot point. They can't let the ball go back to Tulsa on a miss. Reister was seven of eight in the Valley coming into tonight's game for the foul line, but a 50% free throw shooter overall, and he misses once again. He has missed five out of six free throws here tonight. Illinois State, this may be last ditch effort time to look for that three-pointer. Under two minutes to go. Illinois State trailing by 14. Jackson leaves it short. Scott the rebound to Lloyd on the break. Lloyd's not going anywhere. He's going to play it on the half court, run that clock. He's got his instructions from Coach Barnett. There's a team looking for their first win in conference play. They've lost six in a row overall. Young team building confidence tonight. The shot is there for Wingard. What a night he's had. He has been super tonight. He had 10 first half points. You saw his, sec his the first two here in the second half. Feed inside. Shot blocked on the play by the Golden Hurricane. Royster! The big man, twice in a row, brought it down on the fast break. You can just see the look in that young man's eyes. He wants to go all the way. 6'7", about 210. He's like a locomotive when they get him out there on the break. 18-point lead now for Tulsa. Under two minutes to go. Pemberton takes the pass inside of his foul. Lloyd appeared to be the guilty party. Lloyd picks up his second personal. Royster going to the bench from a, with a nice round of applause for the fans. Big guy put on a show, didn't he? Oh, he got an NBA step or two, I believe. He sure does. But I tell you what, he loved it. The crowd gave him a nice round of applause when he left. Put a little excitement into the game. Well, the game is not hard surgery, it's fun. He puts fun into it. Pemberton misses on the free throw. The rebound bribe loose by Scott. Tulsa sealing it away. Their fifth win in 16 games. And they snap a six-game losing streak if they hang on here tonight. And at the moment, you've got stock in the Golden Hurricane. You're sitting pretty. They lead by 18 with 133 left to go. 5% or less, maybe 23. You shouldn't win. Very, very tough to win. Also trying to salt it away. This is Brian Lloyd. They're going to put it in the wayback machine here. They're going to take their time and just milk that clock. Jeff Sadowski, Parker out front. There's Wingard. Jackson nearly triggered it loose and then fouls Sadowski. 
Jackson did what he had to do. Third personal foul on Ricky Jackson. Stops the clock with 67 seconds left to be played. When Illinois State thinks about where they go next, as you see J.D. Barnett savoring possibly his first league win of the year, they go on down to Wichita State way, and you have to hope for their sake that they can shake whatever type of bug they had while eating to get themselves back to where they're healthy to play Wichita State because that is not an easy place to play. Well, Taphorn with the uh, sore knee, and certainly we've been mentioning so often Cliff Peterson been limited here uh, in this ball game and in others recently by an ankle injury. They were not 100% physically coming in. Now you throw on top of that six guys coming down with food poisoning. You've got a real problem and you're on the road. You're going to stay on the road this weekend. A couple of nails in the coffin by Jeff Sadowski. Here's the lead for Stokes. Good move inside. Not bad for a tight end. Not bad for a football player, huh? 55 seconds to go. Wingard picks up the foul. Ray Wingard has certainly made his presence felt out here tonight. He fouls out of the ball game, finishes with 12 points, as I mentioned, 10 of which came in the first half of play, and he leaves with 55 seconds to go. For a guy with not much experience, the fans here are certainly showing their appreciation with a nice round of applause for his effort tonight. 55 seconds left to be played. Wade Jenkins up off the Tulsa bench. He comes back on. Ricky Jackson with a one and one opportunity at the line. Normally a good free throw shooter. One of two from the strike tonight. Talking with Burl Sell, one of the officials on the side, right in front of us here. In fact, he was out there almost in his hip pocket, wasn't he? Lloyd takes the rebound. That missed free throw kind of underlines the kind of night it's been for Illinois State all the way around. Parker is fouled by Stokes. Second personal on Stokes, and Parker will head to the free throw line. Usually, Parker gets the score here tonight. Usually, Wayne, when you have shooting problems, the old say, uh, saying when it rains it pours. Shooters have a tendency to get on uh, rolls. They either roll ahead and make everything or they go backwards and that roll backwards can be as deep as one when you're, when you're on a roll and you're hitting everything. And that's what happened tonight. They can't even convert on the foul line. And they're a really a very good foul shooting team. Illinois State, as we showed you in a graphic a moment ago, they came in shooting just under 50% as a team from the field for the season. That's not bad. But boy, they have struggled here tonight. They struggled in the second half in Chicago the other night. Fallon Wakasey comes on. Along with James West. And Lloyd heads out of the ball game. Brian Lloyd, an outstanding effort here tonight. He gets a hug and a handshake from J.D. Barnett. This win could mean a lot for Tulsa's program, their young players. It could get them back on track and thinking positive. Stokes on the tap, it won't go off the miss by Blair. Jenkins clears the board. No shot clock now, half a minute to be played. Parker and James West play catch out front. 20 seconds to go. Time left of the game, lower right-hand corner of your screen. Tulsa is going to snap their six-game losing streak. And Illinois State suffers a devastating conference loss on the road. Shot blocked inside. Redbirds come away with it. Time winds down as Blair fires from center court, and that is it. Tulsa Golden Hurricane pick up their first conference win here tonight. They're now 1-3 in the conference, 5-11 overall. 